Oh, I do love seeing you here every time you show up. It does my heart good. I'm John Zadar, the host of On Top and Hot. This is June 6th. It is Wednesday. Now, what we do on this show is we like to look at OTC and penny stocks that we should be looking at. Stocks that are doing forward splits, hair reverse mergers, some great headlines, catalysts, stocks that just have technicals on running, whatever they are. You see, I'm a day trader, so I see a lot of stuff through the day. Now, I can't share it all with you, but I can share some, and that's what this show is all about. Now, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. It's my go-to site. Whenever I do research on an OTC stock, this is where I go every single time because, in case you didn't know, the SEC and FINRA update this site, and I don't know of any other, every single day for every single OTC stock. Why waste my time over at Google sorting through information trying to find what I want when it's current right here all the time? So I love this site for that. So let's take a look at how the OTC market fared today. I see our dollar volume is up. We hit our average yesterday for 2.1 billion. Today we're going up. Our share volume, uh, I do believe we came down. Yeah, we're down to 6.2. I think we were actually at 8.2 yesterday. So that was a big drop. And we dropped about 40,000 in trades. So no, today was not a great day on the OTC market. She is just trudging along right now. All right, so I've got a few stocks I want to share with you today. These are stocks that have all got news. They're all running for a reason, but they've all got low floats. I probably shouldn't tell you that in advance. And then I've got some show and tells, you know, stocks that I just didn't have enough information to make a focus out of it, but there's enough information that you should be paying attention to it. So let's go see what I got for you. This first stock we're taking a look at was hot. I mean, it was really soaring today. This is HWKE, Hawkeye System. Get it? Soaring? <laughs> Seriously, folks, this thing was tearing it up. They had big news that came out today. So big that it actually has the company doing some backstepping just to make it happen. But it really does look good. So Hawkeye Systems finished the day at $0.07. Cents with over 141% gains, and it was a lot higher than that earlier. She's on the middle tier of the OTC. We call that the better tier. It's better because you have to audit your financials. You're trading pinks. Most pinks don't have audited financials. A real licensed professional CPA looking at the numbers. No, 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 it's just the management. They give them to us. And I'm not saying they're doing anything wrong. It's all legal, but are they accurate? You've got to take their word for it. So that's, or are they honest? You got to take their word for it, right? So QBs, they're more trustworthy. They're more transparent. The information is valid, and that's what's important. Speaking of valid information, Verified Profile and Transfer Agent. These green ticks on the OTC market are very important. This is information being validated behind the scenes. So we like to see this, especially on a pink, but it's good on every stock. So this looks really good in those regards. Now, I'd like to tell you that this is what they're doing, but it's not. They've totally changed directions, and it's probably going to help them in more ways than one. So what was the relative volume around that news today? Kicking! <laughs> we went from 8,000 to 3.3 million, and I think we're getting aftermarket activity because I was warming up here, and it was 3.2 million. So it's still jumping right now. And what is that? About... Uh, 40 times her normal volume. So it has definitely jumped up. What about her share structure? Looking for the float. Well, there you go. I go to the unrestricted shares. You can count on those to pretty much be right on the money for the float. Now, it will list the float in most places, but it will normally be outdated or wrong. Well, look at that. <laughs> for those of you that follow me, you know I don't think we've ever seen the float actually down here. It's never been the same. So this is a super rare occasion. Don't get used to it. So this is the float, as I said, the unrestricted shares. And we got 9.3 million, under 10 million. So we absolutely have a very good float here. Financials, what do we got going on? Well, they made 3 million two years ago, 2.5 million last year. But look, they spent more than that. 
they were in the hole $19,000 at the end of, well, that was June of last year. So yeah, they need a change. And I've read the news and this is the sort of help they need. And this is the help they are going to get now. We are going to change that revenue situation. Disclosures. We know all of their financials are current and that's really all they got here. There's nothing else to be seen. So jumping over to that news. What we can see here is that uh, a lot of it is just basically quarterly report news. But here, back in uh, October of last year, Hawkeye announces letter of intent to acquire 615 Technologies. Now, I was originally going to show this news to you. It's a company that they have set up to buy. It's going to be their company. They are changing the name. They're changing the ticker. And there's going to be a reverse split. I thought that was all worthy of showing you, even though it was back in October. None of it's happened yet. None of it's completed. But then I did read this shareholder update. It pretty much just says more about this, but nothing more. Then you have today's news. And today's news actually refers to this. So we're just going to jump into that. So this did come out today, July 6th. And they say here, Hawkeye Systems is pleased to announce that it has entered into a letter of intent to acquire Blue Gold International Limited, an entity valued at $250 million, a quarter billion dollars, in a share exchange that will result in a reverse takeover of Blue Gold by Hawkeye. The shareholders of Blue Gold International Limited will hold upward of 95% of Hawkeye post acquisition. So Blue Gold is going to be the controlling interest here. Blue Gold is the 90% owner and operator of Bogaso Prestia Gold Mine in Ghana, which contains one of the most significant gold concessions in the world famous Ashanti Gold Belt. The transaction is subject to due diligence and definitive documentation and is expected by all parties to close by October 31st, 2022. Hawkeye and Blue Gold intend to complete a $6 million funding arrangement prior to July 31st, which will be invested into Blue Gold and serve as working capital during the due diligence. Now, this is important. Hawkeye has also at the same time terminated all other LOIs and discussions with alternative opportunities it has been evaluating, as previously reported, as it believes Blue Gold represents the strongest potential upside for its shareholders. So that other deal that they were making back in October, nope, it's off the table. We don't even have to think about it anymore. This is all they have their eyes on. They tell us here that Blue Gold stated, we are pleased to be re-entering the equity capital markets with a primary listing in the U.S. through this transaction with Hawkeye. During the due diligence period, Hawkeye intends to complete a 1 to 10 reverse stock split, change the company name and the ticker symbol. There will be a rebranding of the company. So really everything didn't change except the deal. They had a deal with one company. They were going to do a reverse split, change the name and ticker. They're still doing all that. It's just now a different company. However, along with that, and they don't give us a date except now I could conject here that it would be October 31st. The day they close the deal is probably the day they're going to do the reverse split. And we've already been told about it. So when you see the news press come out that says the deal is closed, you're probably going to see that day the shares changed. So we got a 1 for 10 reverse split when the ticker and the name change and the deal is closed. And that is really what's got this company running right now. A quarter billion dollar reverse takeover by Blue Gold. That is now the new owner of this ticker. Let's go take a look at that chart and see how high she was soaring today. As always, we are over here at Thinkorswim, my free trading platform. I got it just for signing up for a free trading account over at TD Ameritrade. So if you need a trading platform as your first or just as a backup, go sign up for that free account. Keep your account open. That's all you got to do. And you've got yourself a trading platform to use absolutely free. So this is HWKE six month, one hour chart. Now, as you can see, she has been under that 200 all this time, except for today and all the way back here. And coincidentally, each time she does break the 200, she reaches for that 12 cent mark. 
We got a high here of 12 and a half cents and today her high was 12 cents. Now, something that occurs to me, it was just going through the back of my mind, we found this to be what, 9.3 million shares. If they do a 1 in 10 reverse split, it will affect that float. Oh yes, it will. It will take it down to 1 tenth of what it is. That's going to make this float 930,000 shares. That is a ridiculously low float. I mean, right now under 10 million is a super duper low float, but under a million? I can't even imagine how little volume it would take to make that thing move. So today was the only day you really see any activity here, right? We don't have any volume built up. There's nothing really to talk about on the technicals except for today when everything shot up initially and then has pulled back. Looking at that 20 day one hour view, nothing happening, not until today. And it was all in the first hour. At first hour, she hit her high and then has pulled back. And it looks like she's kept at least 50%, if not more, which would be a good thing. That would be a solid gain. We can see her technicals now are starting to roll over and cool down. Five day, five minute. Well, it wasn't an hour. It was only five, 10, 10 minutes at the most, 10 minutes at the most that she moved virtually 350 percent in 10 minutes or less she hit her high here of 12 cents and then started to pull back and if we draw a bottom line here that is our beginning of our surge and right there is the top of our surge i like to find the center i would like to refer to as my attitude line what's the attitude of that gain well if she stays above that 50 percent mark keeps 50% or more of what she put on the table that day, I feel the gains were solid. They were legitimate. Chances are she's going to hang around this mark and then move up. Not a guarantee, but the probabilities are stronger. And they work just the opposite if she comes underneath. Now, when I say underneath, I don't mean like this, just coming underneath. It's still hanging on, you know, like the monkey bars. You're still there. So as long as it's underneath it or right on top of it, it looks good. Now, if it starts to come down, and this was scary right there, but you can see she bounced off the 20, which just came into the picture. And right now, we just had the 50-day come into the picture. And the price likes to play up to the strongest SMA. So actually, the board looks pretty good right now. She held her gain. She's right there on the center line. Technicals really don't show Show that she's got anything going on right now. No leftover momentum. However, this is a stock with a low float. She has already presented how she runs. Give her some volume and boy, she blasts off. So the next PR that comes out is going to be juicy. They're going to give us more information about this deal. I don't presume we'll have to wait all the way until October, but maybe we do. So picking this up at a decent price would be a great play because when she jumps, she jumps big, she jumps fast. Remember that. You want to get out fast too. This isn't a stock that I would hold. I mean, I don't know enough about the company, but it's great for a day trade. Look, folks, if I'd gotten into this, lucky enough, if I'd gotten into this, got up in the morning, saw the news, said, oh, I think that's going to be something, saw the volume starting to build up, jumped in, got up to say 150%. Okay, I start feeling that churning and burning inside. I'm nervous. I don't know when it's going to fall. So now I'm not even blinking as I'm staring at the chart. I'm waiting to see anything red because you're darn right. I'm not just watching the price bars. I am looking at the SMAs, the RSIs, the MACDs. I'm looking at all my technicals. I'm looking at other time periods. I'm looking at the one minute. I'm watching it very closely and then backing out to five minutes to support my one minute view. And if anything looks tricky, I'm out. But even if everything looks gorgeous, I don't know when it's going to hit that ceiling. And when it does, chances are it's going to bounce back fast. And it may not stay up here in the middle ground. It may fall all the way down. Who the heck knows? So what I do, uh, let's go in that five-day, five-minute view. Let's say it gets up to 150%. I don't know where it's going to go. I have no clue it's going to go to 350 and I'm not worried about it. 150 is a great gain. How often do you get that, right? So I put in my sell now. Now I should sell at market. 
you try to put in a limit order, it's moving, right? And it's moving up very quickly. So why would you put in a limit order and trap yourself? Let the market order get in there and it'll catch whatever the price is at the time you sell. So as you're putting in your order, it's rising. You probably glance up for a second. It's still rising. You put your order in market, bang. You got more than you anticipated. If you wait for this ceiling and then start to see it fall and do everything the same way, you start typing, it's falling. You look up to see what's happening, it's falling. By the time you sell, you get less than you expected. I know it's hard to leave money on the table, but it's even harder to watch losses accumulate as you're trying to get out. You're getting burned running from the burning house. Look, folks, just take your money on the uphill. You'll never, ever go broke leaving money on the table. Take what you can get. If it's big, watch the technicals. Take extra, but don't wait for the ceiling. That is the loser's game. All right, let's go take a look at the next stock while you put this stock on your watch list for news. I'm not saying watch it for the charts. We're watching this one for news. You should have a list of things you check each morning when you get up. Check this stock in the morning to see if they have any news. Chances are it's going to run if they do. You don't want to hear about it after it started running. You want to be there when it started running. So each morning, check stocks that you know run when news comes out and be ready for them. Now we're ready to look at the next stock. Now if you're a regular viewer of my videos, thank you very much. Uh, you probably remember that I just covered this stock on June 29th, a few days ago, ticker EMGE, Emergent Health Corp. Well, I couldn't ignore it today. She was the number one traded stock on the OTC market. She had over 2,200 trades today. She had big gains because she had news, just like she did on the 29th. News came out that she made a deal. That stock went up beautifully and it did take a nice dip great entry price for today because news came out of another deal today and it took off though it did pull back but as I said there's a lot of investors watching this and she responds beautifully to press releases so we're going to take another look at this so she finished the day today at 0 0.0163 just a little over 81 percent gains she's on the pink tier and current and got those precious green ticks I tell you to look for looks good so what is this company about well, they do a lot of unique things. Let me t cover a couple of them here for you so you can get a feel for it. Emergent believes it is positioning itself as a leader in the field of regenerative medicine. Emergent is focusing current efforts on marketing licensed, patent pending natural stem cell mobilizing agents. Emergent is also licensed under a patent pending application to market a dual acting all natural diet aid designed to help control hunger through normal body signals to the brain and stomach. Their research and development department is also exploring other areas such as citrigos that can naturally enhance a person's own growth hormone production. And they just now acquired another subsidiary, I forget the name of it, but it works with health products for pets. So they do have a lot going on right now and a lot of people are trading this stock. So what exactly was the volume around the stock today? Well, she normally does 1.5 million. Today she did 108 million. So you're looking at about 80 times, somewhere like that, 75 times her normal volume. A lot of activity. Share structure. Not bad, not super duper low, but that is a low float. 41 million, we see stocks with billions of shares. 41 million isn't bad at all, right there. Financials, what are they doing for income? Well, they got nothing at the end of last year. Quarterly? All right, at the end of March, they had $14,000, those three zeros, and had to spend 4,000 to keep it, so they got $9,000 out of it. So hopefully all these deals they're making are gonna actually help them with the revenues. That's what it's all about, right? Doing business. Disclosures, anything current over here? Under the SEC filings, no, not since 2021. So let's take a look at that news. Now virtually all the news here is from this year, except the very bottom one, that's from 2016. 
But we see the very first piece of news for 2022 is about that subsidiary I was telling you that they acquired for the pet company. Emergent Health acquires PharmaZoo Core to enter the $30 billion global veterinary medicine market. And even PharmaZoo has made a deal here recently. It was here in March. Emergent Health subsidiary PharmaZoo executes an agreement with Dynacord to develop various injectable and topical biological exomes for the treatment of arthritis, joint care, wound care, and inflammation for pets. Told you it was for pets. Now, at the same time, they told us that they were entering into the anti-aging market, which is where a lot of their focus is right now. The next few PRs, well, they're bringing in different people and sending other people on their way. They're changing management. But it is these last two news presses that have had this stock running, the one on the 29th and today. Let's check out the 29th. Now, this is a deal they have made, but they haven't completed yet. We're waiting for it to close. Emergent Health Corps executes binding letter of intent to acquire Fusion Special Pharmacy. Fusion Specialty Pharmacy is already generating between three and four million dollars a year. Now, the company is a nationally accredited compounding pharmacy licensed in 27 states and located in St. George, Utah, dedicated to formulating creative individualized compounded medications that can improve compliance, maximize the potential for therapeutic success, and reduce the overall cost of healthcare, which is really the bottom line for most people. They tell us that Fusion offers the personalized attention that other pharmacies are unable to offer due to their business environment. They're just not set up for it. Fusion's nationally accreditation with Pharmacy Compounding Accreditation Board ensures the patients and the providers that every compound prescription is made only with top quality ingredients, and our Focus Script accreditation allows us to work with most insurance companies. And that's what had it running on the 29th. Today was this news. Emergent Health Corps announces it has executed another letter of intent to acquire Region Bio Wellness, a distributor of various products in the plant-based and regenerative medical fields. Along with this, once it is completed, Jim Morrison, president and CEO of Regen, will join the management team of Emergent. Now they want you to know that he was also the president of L'Oreal, worked with Redkin, worked with Matrix. He has some credentials. He has some renown. So hopefully he's going to help the company. And if you want more information about their products, there's more of that too. So this is a pretty good newsletter if you're looking for information. And this is what has got the stock running. They're making deals left and right. They are getting bigger. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what sort of pattern she's setting up for the next news press. Oh, I remember this stock. Last time we were here, we were talking about toboggan runs, weren't we? <laughs> this is sticker EMGE, six month, four hour chart. So we got a high back here of almost seven cents and a low a little while ago of double zero four six. And right now we're just a little over a penny and a half. She ran downhill and then just kind of went flat for a long time. Hit a low bubble, but didn't respond much to it until here recently with the news presses and the deals. Had a huge jump, huge fallback, and a huge jump and a huge fallback. But look, technicals look like it wants to recover. MACD has actually had a crossover and pushing up. Our RSI is at 60, which is the baseline for where you want to start to look for growth. But the CCI is pulling back and is at the neutral zone right now. Looking at the 20 day, one hour view. So we hit that high fell over 50% it looks like, continued falling, and my golly, look at that, fell right down to where she started on the 28th, 29th, perfect entry, then she took off again, and she has fallen, and chances are, she may fall down to here again, but what we are seeing is a habit, this stock likes to react to the press. Now, of course, it's falling, not because it's bad news, but because it's that kind of market. People are taking their profits and running. And that's what I'm telling you to do. We're not investing long-term in most of these. Not when you see runs like that. You're just going to be throwing the profits away. Get into these. Take your profits. Get out. Let it fall. Watch for more news. This is one of those stocks, EMG, that needs to be on your news watch list. You see how she reacts and she does it early. Right at the beginning of the day, she takes a very quick run and she gives that money away and then takes it all back. So EMGE, 
put it on your news list, check this news out before the bell goes off and you might be able to catch the next run. And if you watch this, you'll probably be able to get it at a real good price down here at 0094, something like that. All right, let's go take a look at that next stock. Now this stock had some really nice news today. It's news that investors are always looking for. This is ticker HNRC, Houston Natural Resources, or is that Reserve? In either case, they finished today at 24 cents with 50% gains. And I'll tell you right now, she had double that earlier today. She's on the pink tier and current has those green ticks we're always looking for. Now this description, maybe they do still work with oil field waste, but I'm not too sure. What I found was this out of their most recent press release. Houston Natural Resources Corp is a diversified holdings company with business operations and investments. The portfolio companies include investments in energy, information technology, and healthcare. So maybe oil fields are somewhere in there, but that's what they say they do. Now, like I said, the company did have really good news today. It was quite exciting. So what was the relative volume? Well, that's a little disappointing. I am really surprised. She normally does 55,000 shares a day. Today, she didn't even hit a million, just under 900,000 shares. So she is under the radar as far as I can tell. Share structure, anything decent over here? Well, yes, we do. Whoa, that's impressive. We have 17.2 million shares in the float, 30 million outstanding, and 6 billion authorized. We're lucky that the float is low. My goodness, 17.2 million folks. Financials, is this company making any money? Oh, they are. Yeah, they're making some money. Don't forget those three zeros, right? So at the end of last year, they did over 18 million, took over 10 million to cover the expenses. They got to keep almost $8 million of that. So at least they're not in the red and they are making money. What about quarterly? Yeah. Just here at the end of March, they did over three and a half million dollars for March, spent a million and a half for it, got to keep two million dollars for three months worth of work. So yeah, this company is doing something at 24 cents. Disclosures. Any new disclosures over here? No. 2005. Really old. So let's take a look at that news. So a lot of their news here is about their earnings. They're also talking about uh, working with dividends, which is part of the news that's coming out. I can see why they were talking so much about that. You can see they were trying to make a deal here. Cunningham Energy Acquisition, which was started way back here in March. This is May that they're talking about it, but this doesn't seem to be anything about that. They then acquired a water treatment company for $10 million at the beginning of this month. Then you have today's news. Today's news tells us, you can see here July 6th, Houston Natural Resource Corp announced today that it will spin off its non-energy assets to a wholly owned subsidiary, Worldwide Diversified Holdings Inc., and then dividend them to their shareholders. You like what you're hearing here? The company announced that effective June 30th, the board of directors has approved the transfer of non-energy investments of worldwide diversified holdings at $5 per share. So they're going to take this subsidiary, which they're calling worldwide diversified holdings, which is theirs on the OTC market. They're going to spin it out onto the NASDAQ for $5 a share. And then anybody who owns shares of this stock is going to get free shares of their new spin out Worldwide Diversified. Worldwide Diversified Holdings, WDHI, I guess that'll be the ticker, has audited statements and will provide for a listing later this year. The dividend record date will be announced during the third quarter and will automatically be distributed to the company's shareholders. The company is anticipating an initial trading price of $5 per share to provide for the company to list on the major exchange and receive additional capital. The transaction will provide for a dividend of $1.75 of WDHI shares for every one share of HNRC held by the shareholder record date. So I'm not quite sure how that works out. It looks like you're getting... Um, Oh, one third of a share of the new company 
for every full share you have. So it looks to me like a one to three dividend for every three shares of HNRC you hold, you'll get one share of the new company. Now, they mention here the record date. The dividend record date will be announced during the third quarter. What this is, is the cutoff date. The record date means you have to have your shares on record by that date. So anything you buy from now until that record date will qualify for the dividend. You'll get one share for every three shares that you own of this stock. So the more you own, the more you're going to get. And here's the great thing. After the record date, let's say it's October 31st. They count up your shares October 31st. That's your dividend. Come the next month, October, November, <laughs> November 2nd, November 3rd, you can sell those shares. Yeah, you can sell those shares and you still qualify for your dividend. Nobody says, and it's not written anywhere, that you have to hold them. You just have to have them by the record date. What happens after the record date is not their concern. They owe you the dividend. So that's what's got this stock running. It has a dividend coming. They are spinning this company out and people want that dividend. They want a free share for every three shares they own of a company on the NASDAQ that is going to be brand new. So let's go see what that chart looks like. Looks a lot like most OTC charts if you ask me. This is ticker HNRC, six month, four hour chart. High bubble back here on this side, $1.25. Low bubble over here just a few days ago of 15 cents, and right now we're at 24 cents. She's been under the 200 most of the time, crowned it a little bit here, but then fell all the way down. And even today, she hasn't quite reached that 200. Volume has gotten stronger in the last few months, tapered off a little bit, but today, boy, that volume just rocketed up there. We can see how tiny these price bars are, real tiny, and then boom, huge price bars. Once it got on top of the 10, you see that folks, she's underneath the 10. Once she got up on top of that 10, that was all she wrote. She just jumped and flew on top of the 50 and is sitting up on top of the 50 right now. MACD looks real good, though the RSI is pulling back as is the CCI. That one hour view, real gentle fall. No fight or flight, she's just coming down. Hit a low bubble, but it didn't cause a bounce. She just went sideways from there. And then this morning, immediately launched. One large bar to get on top of the 50, and that was it. She took off over the 200, lurched a little bit higher, and then has fallen back and is sitting right on the 10, right now on the one hour. Technicals, MACD is still pushing up. RSI is churning back up into overbought. And our CCI is coming over the third line. Things are looking strong on the one hour. Five day, five minute. What story does it tell? All right, so she ran the first half of the day. That's 12.30 in the afternoon. A few dips, but didn't come down to the 20. And when she finally did come down to the 20, she crashed through it. Hit the 50. Thank God that stopped her. She bounced came under the 50 and looks like she's coming right back up to the 50 right now. We see a crossover on the MACD is imminent. RSI is pushing up fast and hard as is the CCI going into the green. This looks like it's ready to continue on moving up and I believe it will folks. I believe this is enough to get people to buy shares. They want those free shares in a NASDAQ stock. Absolutely. And getting one share for every three shares, that's a pretty good ratio. I like that. So I would keep my eye on HNRC. If not keeping your eye on it, you may want to get into it. You want some of those free shares? Do I think it's going to dip to get a better price? That I wouldn't count on. No, I think she's going to start to rise, folks. You're going to catch dips as she's rising. This may be the best price you get. I ain't guaranteeing that, but I bet it's a very strong likelihood she doesn't dip hardly at all. We'll see, right? All right, let's go take a look at some stocks I was going to show you, but I didn't. But I still want you to be aware of them real quick, real brief. 
Now I'm going to show you three stocks that I was looking at today. They had some really strong gains, even if they pulled back. They did run strong today, but there wasn't a lot to actually say about them. So I didn't want to focus in on them, but there's enough to show and tell, which is what I'm going to do right now. This is WTRH, Waiter Holdings, Inc. This is a door-to-door -door delivery company, kind of like Grubhub and DoorDash and such. Now they have no catalyst of their own today, no filings, no news. They are a sympathy play. From what I gather, Amazon just made a huge investment into Grubhub. I do believe it was Grubhub. And this company being in the same business just rose on that news. At least that's what everybody suspects. Now there's also a rumor out there that WTRH could be bought out by Grubhub. I don't know how that got started or why, but it is out there. So you may want to keep your eye on this. She had 73% gains at the end of the day, but she did tap out at 100%. Another stock that was running today, MSVI. I think I just covered this this weekend, just the other day. Marijuana Strategic Ventures. 23% is where she finished, but I think she was well over 200% today. I think she had a good strong run and then a strong pullback. She had news the other day, changed her name to Mushrooms Inc. Now they are going to have edibles, maybe even some psychedelics, but what got me really turned on was they have found a way to make leather, packaging materials, uh, insulation, all out of mushrooms. There's a video out there on YouTube. It's really interesting and the products look perfect. So this has been running for two days in a row with some good bounces. You may want to take a look at this. What was the share structure on this? Oh my God, folks. 1.5 million shares. You better get your butt over there and watch MSVI. She is bouncing hard. She had some good gains today. Last one I want to show you is Humble. Humble did, uh, I think, 300% uh, gains at her high today. Maybe a little bit more, but there's no news. I seen her starting to run at the end of the day, so I went looking. There was no tweets, there was no filings, no news. I have no idea why this company is running. Originally, she was running as a reverse merger play for TSPN. Uh, TSPN was a hardwood floor company and then came along this company, and it was a beautiful play, but she has fallen seriously since then. Right now, she's at eight cents, and I think she had about 300% gains today. And not knowing why she ran, you may wanna watch the news, something may pop up watch the disclosures whatever it is it could be good and be more gains coming so there you go folks three show and tell and three focuses hopefully you're taking advantage of all the information I'm putting on the table you're with me a little over 30 minutes I just don't want to give you three stocks your time is more valuable than that so I am bringing you the news some show and tell and I'm focusing in on some and did you see a, a pattern here today with the stocks we focused in on it seems that as soon as news press comes out for these low float stocks, they bounce immediately, real fast, real high, and then they fall before the day's even over. That's why I'm telling you to make a press release watch list. You want a list of stocks that run on press releases, and first thing in the morning before the bell rings, you go through that list, and you see if any of them have news. And if they do, there's a very good likelihood you're gonna make some good profits today. Don't get greedy though. Don't be looking for that silly. Take it as it's rising, not as it's falling. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.